Hey folks, what's up? BQ back again with the B-Side Podcast brought to you by the Impact Lounge. If you checked out my last B-Side Podcast, I did a video version on YouTube and that's going to be the format for the most part going forward. But today I really don't have the time for the editing and all that good shit. So uh, I'm going audio for you guys and uh, we're going to talk some Impact Wrestling. Every time I do these B-Side Podcasts, there's a topic on my mind. I keep them few and far in between because I want it to be something that's, um, you know, dear to my heart and something uh, something that I really believe in. Uh, but first, let's talk about the Super X Cup bracket that came out because this ties into what I have to talk to you guys about. Let's talk about the Super X Cup bracket that's taking place at Genesis. I'm look. I'm right now. I'm staring at this this image. Uh, does anybody care about this? L- let me flip that into more of a positive first. <laughs> the Impact Plus shows have been pretty good. For the first like month, year and a half, not month and a half, year and a half, like these shows meant nothing. And now we're starting to see title changes. We're starting to see big announcements. You know, it, there's a uh, much improved, um, probably not video quality, but the audio quality and everything. So they've been good shows. But you look at Genesis here, and I'm just like, Okay, the Super X Cup tournament. To to give you guys another positive, I'm really glad that the, this appears the entire tournament's going to take a place on this show, and those are the type of tournaments I like. There was an A, I mean not AW, N, NWA tournament for the TV title about a year ago. There was qualifying matches on Power, yeah, but the whole tournament was on a pay per view. Uh, when I was a kid, I remember WrestleMania four, maybe five. Um, They did the whole world title tournament and then watching King of the Ring tournaments on the the whole tournament on the show like that. I enjoy tournaments like that. I don't like tournaments broken up and here's a match this week and a match next week. Like that's not fun for me because then I don't even remember who the who's in the brackets and who they're fighting. You know, who the winner of this this match fights and all that, you know, that's just not the way I dig it. Many of you probably don't care, but that's the way I'm into tournaments. So first looking at this, um, and again, as I said, this is going to tie into my main topic. But I'm staring, sitting here staring at the image. The first thing that jumps out, out at me is that Ace Austin's going to win this thing. And if he doesn't win it, he's going to be in the finals. That is a guarantee. And then I see he's wrestling Suicide. When they use Suicide, he's cool every once in a while to show up. But to me, that's that's lazy. That's saying we don't have people to put in this X Division. Like, if you watch AW Dynamite, there's more people in the Dark Order than in the X Division for Impact Wrestling. And it's weird because that, this is the thing that they're like, you know, the company was built on the X Division and this and this. I mean, they say it every time someone's wrestling. But you really got, like, three or four X Division people on your roster, if we're if we're being real. Like, this is not an X Division. This is, this is reminiscent of... Uh, before Jarrett came in and, and they were using like Braxton Sutter and Marche Rocket and guys that were like, yeah, they're, they're X Division. There's no limits, you know? Like it was just an excuse to put people into the division that didn't really wrestle that style. And I'm, I'm getting that vibe a little bit with this. So yeah, to me, Suicide is, is lazy. Uh, Davari, who's looking very impressive, very jacked. He's actually on the Impact website on the official roster. Uh, he's not an X Division wrestler. Uh, Cousin Jake, I've watched him a lot, a lot, like local, and he probably is an X Division style wrestler, but that's not how he's presented on Impact. So this is an opportunity with him breaking away from Cody. It's it's an opportunity to, uh, you know, elevate him a little bit, his style of wrestling and his character, because I think the Cousin Jake persona holds him back a little bit. So, you know, it's an it's an idea, but for the most part, the way he wrestles on Impact is an X Division. Then on and the on the other side you got Crazy Steve. And this is the other thing that jumps out at me. The left side of this turn the, this bracket is better than the, the the right hand. You know, when a tournament's supposed to be the eight the the one seed versus the eight seed, and you know, like like if you're watching sports, like this is very random. It seems like the best wrestlers in the bracket are on the left. Um, but you got Crazy Steve on the right-hand side. He's not an X Division style wrestler. I got to give him respect for wrestling under that suicide mask, though, because he already can't see. 
and the fact that he was able to wrestle under that mask is, is pretty damn impressive. He's taken on Trey, Trey Lamar. Uh, he, he's the most known name out of these three. I say that because I don't know who the hell the other two are. But uh, Trey Lamar, I'm, I'm guessing him and Ace Austin are going to wrestle in the finals. And either Ace is going to win because they need to do something with him or this guy's going to win. But if one of these independent dudes win, they, they need to be a part of the roster. Um, and then you got Casey Navarro, I've never heard of, and uh, Blake Christensen, never heard of. Not saying they're not good, I'm just telling you I've never heard of them. And this reminds me of when they announced the brackets for the tag team tournament. And, you know, you got the C-Stars, Killer Kelly, and Renee Michelle, and it's like, who are these people? I've heard of Renee, Renee Michelle, and then I, I knew uh, Ashley Box of the C-Stars, and that was it. So I knew two of the four, but... Um, I didn't know Vox was part of the C-Star, so I'm still like, who, who the hell? And I know that the Shimmer Tag Team Champions, and I do watch a little Shimmer, but clearly I haven't watched it in a while because I, I didn't know they were. But it's there's just this randomness to the way they they do these tournaments and the way they use stars sometimes. It's like we, we haven't we're not given a reason to care about any of these people. We're not re- we don't have a reason to care about any of the regular impact talent for the most part on this in this tournament, you know? Not a knock on them and their talent. I'm just saying like how are they presented on TV? Uh, uh, someone that matters? You know, not so much. And then uh then you got these guys. So it's very um it's very left side heavy. That that's my thing. So uh I'm I'm going to assume that the tournament's going to be done well. You know, I think it's going to, you know, I don't think they're going to put crap out there on X, on Impact Plus. But as a wrestling fan, I want to care about the people in the tournament. You know, I want to feel like if you have young talent in here that you're going to scout them and possibly bring them in. Lewis talks about this a lot. About uh, they should be scouting young talent or using young talent, you know. You think about Global Forged, Hakeem Zayn wins. Like, how long did it take for him to get any kind of relevance on Impact? The Desi Hit Squad helped him a lot, even though they they never won. Jackson Stone won Gut Check. You know, they had the return of Gut Check. He won this show a year ago. March is a year. And there's no signs of him being used. You could have brought him to Call Your Shot Gauntlet. Um, you could use them for this. I mean, you already got people who aren't X Division people in this tournament, so you might as well bring him in to do it. By the time he wrestles, people are going to be like, who? And that's not fair to him. That's not fair to him at all. If he was good enough to win the tournament, then he's good enough to wrestle on the show sooner than later. You know? So we'll see what happens with this. This tournament last year meant absolutely nothing. Uh... The tournament, not last year, it was a couple years ago. And the field was better for it. You know, I, people were more excited for it because they brought people in from, you know, this guy representing the USA, this guy representing Japan, you know. They had ACH in it. They had Sammy Guevara, who's a star in AEW. <laughs> Comes in as a, a nobody. You know, and ACH is a guy I'm a fan of. But Desmond wins. Desmond Xavier means nothing. He's not even booked on the show uh, for, for you know, s- several tapings after. He's not given an X Division title shot. It meant nothing. And I don't want this one to mean nothing. I want it to mean something if they win. What, what happens if they win? They win the Super X Cup. Are they going to get some kind of momentum going forward? Is it going to be a storyline? Is it going to be a title shot? Like, give us something. So, I will be optimistic... I will not be too negative about it. I will be optimistic. But the past dictates the future. And I'm not sure that this is going to mean anything. So here's my topic of the day. Uh, once again, if you guys want to support BQ, you can check the, the uh, comments, and the show notes. <laughs> Click by BQ a coffee. Uh, if you've taken place in that for me already so far, I appreciate you. Please you click the link, buy me a coffee. Uh, shows your appreciation. All good. So here's my topic. This ties into everything I was saying about the the uh, X Cup. Lewis talks about when he does the Shooting Up North podcast here at the Impact Lounge. He talks a lot, a lot, a lot about new talent, new talent, new talent. How do we introduce new talent? How do we get new talent over? <clears throat> he... 
Like, Lewis is furious at Jackson Stone. <laughs> hasn't been on TV. And I get it. He uh, interviewed Jackson Stone, likes him a lot, likes his talent. He, he feels bad for him because it's, it's not right. But anyway, he he mentioned on his podcast that he watched a couple of episodes of AEW Dark. And I've been watching it recently, too. I probably watched the last four or five if they're not watching it forever. Um, and they do introduce new talent correctly. But now, you, now you're at a point, you're impact, and you've got to not only introduce new talent, but you have to do it in a creative manner because there's already a show out there introducing new talent that's good. So here's my ideas. I'm not an expert. I'm not in the wrestling industry. I have a good feel for business, a good feel for marketing. I, uh, I think I'm realistic as a fan. I don't fantasy book stuff that's not possible. You know, I try to be very realistic when I make my um, when when I when I give my uh, recommendations. You know, I did the podcast last year about how to imp- improve Impact Plus and Twitch, and by golly, most of that stuff has been implemented by now. I'm not saying I'm taking credit for it. I'm just saying I think I I think I have realistic ideas. So this is how I would introduce new talent to the Impact Wrestling fans. And to even get people who aren't Impact Wrestling fans to check it out. Because that, that's part of it too, right? I would have a YouTube show. And you know their YouTube right now is no good. It just clips. I would have a YouTube show. Not, not Impact Plus. YouTube. To where lots of people can see it. I would have a show half an hour long. I wouldn't do an hour. I wouldn't do two hours like AW Dark. That's, I mean, that's like way too much. I would do a half hour show. I would take three local talents, you know, because there's logistics here. There's there's finances involved. You're not going to just fly people in from all over. But let's say they get back on the road and they're in Windsor. They're in um, Vegas. They're in New York. You bring in three local talents because let me, you know, to rewind here a little bit. Lewis was saying on his podcast, like, why would someone come and do and wrestle on, on Explosion or even Impact as a as an enhancement talent when they can go on dark and get a lot more exposure. You know, that's why I really think it needs to be, um, a YouTube, uh, because everyone gets YouTube. That's why I think it needs to be a, a YouTube product. I would take three stars and I would give them three opponents. Now there's, there's something I really enjoyed about the TNA days was the, the creative ideas they had for one night only. You know, knockouts, knockdown, which I don't know why they don't do that anymore. Like, women, independent women's wrestling is hotter than it's ever been. <laughs> it's like the perfect time to do knockouts, knockdown, and uh, we don't see it. But there was the X Division uh, one night only. I don't remember what it was called. Generation X, maybe, because there was Destination X as the pay per view, and then uh, Generation X, maybe. I don't, I don't remember. So I'm sure, I'm sure some of you guys are gonna tell me. You know, and there's the Joker's Wild and things like that. Like, I was always really into those type of shows. They were fun. Um, Like, the Joker's Wild shows always sucked because the tag teams weren't random. They didn't even feel random. But it it was still a cool concept to get excited about. So I would take that idea, that concept, and create a show that is a little more original than what you see in another wrestling show. You get three guys, you bring out the first one backstage, it just pops up with whoever the hell's interviewing him. It's probably Josh Matthews. They step out, you know, he gives a little promo, and, you know, much like, if you if you weren't familiar with Knockouts Knockdown, you know, that kind of format, they would have six, eight independent girls in the ring, you know, and they say, okay, Leva Bates, your, part, your opponent is, and then Madison Rain's music would hit, and she would step out, you know? There was a randomness to it. And it was kind of exciting, to be honest, you know? This guy gets his big... This guy and this girl gets their big chance against the Impact talent. So I would do a very similar concept. You bring out one person at a time. Uh, Don't do them all at once. Just one at a time. They cut a promo. Maybe there's a little video package for them. Something like that. Or the video package can be the promo. You know, a lot of wrestlers are more comfortable talking like that. You do it. They step out and they say, "Here's your opponent." They or actually, they just draw it out of a hat or out of out of whatever. They draw a piece of paper. 
and that's your opponent for today now granted most of the times you're going to get the cousin jakes and the fala boss the uh, johnny swingers it's it's it would be a lot of lower to mid card talents but every once in a while you know what happens if they actually drew Eddie Edwards? They drew Sammy Callahan, you know? You, you keep people guessing, and you, and you don't watch it as like, okay, this is just jobber versus jobber. You, you feel me on that? So you, you just take a very similar concept to Knockouts Knockdown. And, you know, you um, it would force Impact to probably have to promote some independent talent a little bit better than they do now. Um, like I said, you could you could introduce them one by one on the show, or you could promote the three independent stars ahead of time, and then you have a, dra- a graphic that has 10, 15 different wrestlers. Like who the hell are they gonna wrestle? Who who are they gonna take on? When they did that mix match, that's not mix match. It's the WWE that whatever tournament where Tessa Blanchard and teamed up with Sammy Callahan, like they had a really cool graphic for that. Uh, the tournament. I didn't enjoy, but the graphic was pretty cool. So I would do something like that. That was another concept that I really, really liked. I think Impact has always had, not this current management, but the previous one had these like really cool ideas, but just couldn't get them over into something that really got people excited. You know, the the, the foundation was always there, but not, not the delivery, not the execution. So I would just do something like that. A quick show, 30 minutes, uh, it would get people curious on who's going to show up from the impact side and from the independent side and you're going to have to pay up a little bit you know don't just have local towns no one's ever heard of every once in a while you got to bring someone in we've heard of and then here's the flip side to it too as fans we actually have to feel that the company is scouting these people and that's why that's why aw dark works because you know that they are scouting some of the talent on there and then they sign some of them you know, how many times we watching these Impact Plus shows, oh, sign this guy, you know, they're bringing all these independent towns, sign this guy, sign this, and we never see him again. You know, like for the fans, they don't care anymore. You know, I'm kind of glad they stopped doing that format because the fans stopped caring because they don't, they don't sign anyone. Like Larry D and, and um, I love Larry D. But Larry D and AC Romero, yeah, they signed those guys, but no one was like pulling no one is checking for them you know what i mean like they weren't like hey sign these guys they weren't listening to the fans they were just signing guys they wanted to sign and there was like no rhyme or reason as to why they signed them they just did you know it wasn't it wasn't uh based on the the performance they had putting been putting on for weeks on impact and everything so you got to put on a show that makes us care about not only the fresh talent but um it, it gives us opportunity like hey maybe uh Maybe we want to watch Cousin Jake in action because we don't see that a whole lot. There's some guys on Impact we don't see win. There's like half of the roster that I don't even know what their finisher move is, to be honest with you, because they don't they don't win or when they do win, it's a roll up or you know what I mean? So I think the enhancement talent format works. It just has to be done right. It has to be done creatively. And, you know, you do it on YouTube where you can get some uh, YouTube revenue out of it to help, you know, go towards paying for some of the talent that you bring in to do this stuff, you know, and it, it's, it's just original. It's different. And it's, you know, you can't at this point, you, you can't outdo AW dark. So you have to do something different. You can't do an AW dark light. You can't do a version of WWE superstars. Like you, you have to do, you have to put your own spin on it. And this is a way that I would do it. I thought those formats again, were really fun knockouts, knockdown and everything. You know, something like that. You don't have to bring a whole bunch of people. You just do three talent, and every time you go to another city, you you, you bring people in from that city, and then us as fans also have to feel like you're scouting these people and that we might see them on impact and we might see them signed. So that is all I got for you guys today. Leave any thoughts in the comments, and I will talk to you soon. Peace. (laughs) 